Good morning, and good morning, boys and girls. I want to welcome uh, everyone, uh, parishioners and friends of St. Michael's, as well as any visitors that may be watching this recorded celebration of the Mass, the Eucharist, this Thanksgiving to God. Uh, welcome. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, encourage you, uh, it, watching from, from home or wherever you're watching from, to uh, switch on closed captioning on your devices. That will help you follow along, uh, albeit imperfectly maybe, but it will still uh, help in, in most cases for you to follow along. And in the times uh, where there's normally a response back uh, to me, we will insert those responses at the bottom of your screen to help. Uh, all of this, though, might encourage or, or might uh, serve to add to the gravitational pull that some have watching these things uh, to become observers, uh, consumers of it, almost, like watching television. And I encourage you to kind of resist that urge if, you're, if you find yourself feeling it. Uh, and to, to, uh, the invitation is to participate. Uh, to participate in this time, in this celebration of thanksgiving to God. If uh, any of you have any questions uh, uh, for me uh, regarding anything that you see or hear uh, during this celebration, or any other questions, uh, please feel free to send uh, me an email and ask your question. I did get a question last week. And I haven't got to it yet. I haven't responded to it yet. Bad. Uh, but I will. And it's a very good question about uh, how can people change and is change really possible? And so I will. I will get to that question. And thank you for sending it. Uh, so I, you're not being ignored, okay? Uh, but please, so send any questions that you have. Uh, we're entering into this. This is a, a new year, a new church year. So happy new year. And uh, the, the church year begins on this, the first Sunday of Advent every year. And so this Sunday marks our, the beginning of our preparation for Christmas. A uh, Christmas that isn't going to be like any other most of us have ever lived through. Uh, and so, even in this celebration, as we give thanks to God for the blessings that we have received and do receive and will receive, we, we recognize that the limitations that we have uh, in this time. And we ask uh, that the Holy Spirit will help us overcome those. And so let us pray together now in the oldest prayer of the church. Simply, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. And fill our hearts with the joy of anticipation. Fill our hearts with gratitude. For this season that we can anticipate and eventually celebrate. Even knowing that our celebration will be different this year. Different doesn't necessarily mean bad. Highlight for us the positives. Highlight for us the blessings in this season. The blessings that are there that wouldn't be there normally. Console us. Console us with the particular blessings of this year. This season in this year. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts with peace. And as you are filling our hearts with joy and gratitude and peace, we ask that you fill in the gaps of time and space that separate us. So that these, our prayer and our praises, may rise to you as one, to your greater honor and glory. Come, Holy Spirit. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends in Christ, today we begin the season of Advent. It is a time of watching and waiting for the coming of the Lord. The Advent wreath 
reminds us of our yearning for God. Its circular shape tells us of God's everlasting love and faithfulness. Its evergreen branches tell us of eternal life and of God's desire for us to live with him forever. The four candles remind us of the passing of time, our human history, into which God has entered through his Son, Jesus. This is a time of grace, a time for a new advent of Jesus into our lives. On this first Sunday of Advent, we focus on the Lord's second coming. Let us heed the gospel words of Jesus. Be on guard, be prepared, keep awake. As the first candle of the Advent wreath burns, may its flame bid us to, always, to be always ready for the coming of the Lord. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to reveal your Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by your dying and rising, you have given us the promise of eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you ask us to be ready, watching and waiting for your coming. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, O Lord, our Father, our Redeemer from old is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our heart so that you do not fear you? Turn back for the sake of your servants, for the sake of the tribes that you are your heritage. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. When did awesome deeds that we did not expect? You came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you are angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. Restore us, O God, let your face shine on us that we may be saved. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, who were enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth, stir up your might, and come to save us. Restore us. O God, and let your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand has planned. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine on us, that we may be saved. 
but let your hand be upon the man at your right, the son of man you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine on us, that we may be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and in knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in the spiritual gift as you await for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, he will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with a particular task, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. How many times do I see things on social media that suggest that maybe there's a, a desire on the part of some people uh, to see the back of 2020? Uh, and the sooner the better, right? And so for the church year, uh, we, we have seen the back of 2020, so Happy New Year. Uh, today is New Year's Day for the church. If you had to pick, if everyone had to pick one year of your life where you uh, had to stay in bed the whole year, pull the covers over your, over your head, and, and that's where you were for the whole year. I think for, for a great many people, if 2020 wouldn't be in the running, absolutely this pans down this year would be the winner. And yet here we are, and our message on this first Sunday is to keep awake. Keep awake, be ready, be alert. A few years ago when Pope Francis published The Joy of the Gospels, uh, he said in, in that, uh, that it was his desire, his, his really ardent hope, that communities, whole communities, would intentionally strive to read the signs of the times. And he went on to say, 
not just to discern in particular spirits, not just to discern uh, where God is moving in particular moments with particular things, but to really strive to sense whole movements of the Spirit, he called them, whole movements of the Spirit, and to discern good ones and to choose them, and to discern the bad ones and leave them behind. In this year, at the beginning of this Advent, when we're challenged to keep awake and keep alert, what can we say are the movements, the great movements of the Spirit? What might God be calling us to this year in a way that's more powerful than any other Advent we've ever lived through? I think for most of us, this particular Advent, this particular celebration of Christmas that we're heading towards and preparing for will be a Christmas of restricted travel, right? It'll be a Christmas uh, where families and friends really can't get together the way they normally do. It's a Christmas where perhaps the commercial side is going to take a hit, right? Uh, it's a side where it's a kind of a, an advent uh, leading up to Christmas where perhaps there's an opportunity to prepare for a much smaller, quieter, less expensive celebration. And there will be loss in that. There's loss in the inability to celebrate the way we've become accustomed to. There's loss in the inability to be with all of the family and friends. And that's the, a particular loss. Right? But I have to tell you for myself, it's the idea of doing less shopping, the idea of spending less, the idea of a less frantic Christmas isn't all bad at all. The idea of a less expensive one? Is that bad news? For uh, years now, my, my family uh, has placed limits on our gift giving. And you know, uh, the limits, sometimes those limits were more, you know, suggestions, okay. But uh, recently, a short time ago, we decided that in this time, with uh, restrictions, just th with the details of this Christmas, with not knowing if we're even going to be able to get together on Christmas Day or in the Christmas season, that this year the limit would be zero. Now in previous years the limit might have been a suggestion from time to time, but if, there's but not a lot of wiggle room in a limit that is zero, right? And so, this Christmas, yeah. I find myself missing the fact that there, I may not be spending time with my family and the pain of that, but also a little bit of relief that, because I hate shopping. I hate going into malls, right? A little bit of relief that that kind, that end of Christmas is gone. What is the movement of the Spirit? The grand movement of the Spirit. What opportunities are present this year that wouldn't normally be present, that we wouldn't normally be aware of, or that we would struggle with more? The Knights of Columbus for decades have had a saying, keep Christ in Christmas. I think that's going to be easier to do this year in our quieter, lower-key celebrations. But this is a year, unlike others, also with need. And reading the signs of the times, the big movements of the Spirit, 
we know that need has never been greater. And so when we decided as a family that uh, we, the, zero, the, the limit was zero, my first reaction was, well, I'm going to save some time, I'm going to save some hassle, and I'm going to save some money. <laughs> and that would be well and good. But maybe the signs of the times are saying something else. What if I took the money that I would have spent on Christmas, on things that people really didn't need, but donated that money to where the need was great. Would that make a difference? Would that be an impact? What if we all did that? What kind of Christmas could this be? Where is the movement of the Spirit this year? Locally here in Fort Erie, you know, uh, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a couple of checks. I'm going to, uh, a couple or three checks. I'm going to support the St. Vincent de Paul uh, here, uh, associated with our parish. I'm going to support our school communities because they support their families. That's how my budget's going to go. What about people who might want to give me a gift? I'm going to suggest to my family that they take Alpha. You want to give me a gift? Take Alpha. If you've already taken Alpha, volunteer to be on team. And if you've already done that, promise to invite three people. I don't care whether they come or not. Just invite three people. You want to give me a gift for Christmas? Come to Alpha. If you've been on, if you've already done that, volunteer to be back on team. And if you've done that, invite three people. That's what I want for Christmas. I want for Christmas that the people I love experience Christ's love in a way that they never have before. I want for Christmas that the people I love feel God's love in their lives. If I don't get a chance to visit my family this year, I take comfort in the fact that at the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph were away from their families too. And that'll give me time. It'll give me time to have an experience more like the first Christmas than I ever would have any other year. On this first Sunday of Advent, where we are encouraged to keep awake, to read the great movements of the Spirit, to read the signs of the times this year. I invite you to consider how you might re respond to the signs of the times that you discern. And I ask God's blessings on your discernment. Let us profess together our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Advent begins, we hear our Lord challenging us to be alert and ready for Him. The prayers we offer for others express a faith that is attentive and alive. For our church, that through the, our actions and words, we may atone for our sinful ways, especially during the season of watchful expectancy for Christ's coming, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may hear the cries of those in need, the poor, the homeless, the persecuted, and the broken, and see the face of the Lord in their suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened with guilt, that they may turn to God and come to realize the boundless of God's extravagant forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those around the world who suffer from HIV, AIDS, that they may know the tender, compassionate presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this year of celebrating the 175th anniversary of the Cathedral Church, for all the staff that have served so faithfully in our cathedral over the years, and for all staff in our parishes throughout our diocese, that God pour out blessings upon those who dedicated themselves to the church as a diocesan family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, loving Father, as we prepare for the return of your Son by hearing his word, and offering his sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those of you who would normally present yourselves to receive communion at this time, I invite you to receive spiritual communion by praying along with me this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray, for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. And before the final blessing, I invite you to pray along with me this prayer for relief from the COVID-19 coronavirus. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together 
and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Amen. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Hey, good morning, and uh, I uh, have a, a number of things to talk to you about uh, in our kind of weekly State of the Parish Onion uh, addressed <laughs> that we do here. Um, so please bear with me. Uh, I, I want to first uh, shout out, give a shout out to our family ministry team uh for the work that they've done in preparing <clears throat> uh, advent bags for the the families with children who follow along children's liturgy online the mass online and uh, if you uh, are watching this and and you haven't arranged for a bag i'm sure that if you go online uh, and uh, contact uh, or on the facebook page and contact uh, our family ministry team or call the parish office here if you need to uh, we will uh, arrange for you to receive uh, an Advent uh, bag for, for use with the kids uh, during this season. Uh, I'd like to thank one of our Alpha participants in this round, who also is our web designer, uh, Amy Seagram. I just want to acknowledge all her hard work in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> in designing and putting together our website, which is already fantastic and we hope to become even better uh, in the uh, weeks and months uh, shortly ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, as I mentioned in, in the homily, you know, this is a, uh, a season that uh, while there are losses and things to lament, uh, we are called to be awake, uh, alert to the signs, the movements of the Spirit. And uh, I know that for myself, uh, I know what is going to happen to my Christmas budget. Uh, it will go to St. Vincent de Paul and to our school families uh, that are in need. And uh, I will be asking for uh, the gift of Alpha attendance from, from people who want to give me something. Uh, in this season, uh, I invite you to consider whether that's something that you could also contemplate doing, something similar. Uh, <clears throat> I, and you know, locally here, St. Vincent de Paul is does such great work year-round, not just at Christmas, but it's such great work. And I know that in this season, they are so taxed right now uh, with demand that they certainly could use uh, all the help that they get. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I think when I think about money spent and gifts given and the impact of those gifts, um, you know, this is, for me anyway, this is, uh, something that's uh, really uh, strongly on my heart this year. Uh, so, 
Uh, if you uh, are feeling similarly and, and need any contact information, please uh, contact the parish office and we'll put you in touch with, um, with St. Vincent de Paul or our school communities. Uh, please keep in your prayers this week. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, uh, I'll be asking people to consider going to Alpha that as, as their gift to me this Christmas. Uh, but our current Alpha concludes this coming week, so please keep uh, the Alpha team and, and especially the guests in your prayers this week um, as they go forward and, and discern what, what God, is play, call is, God is placing on their hearts uh, going forward. Uh, this coming week also, uh, the Finance Committee will meet. We have a meeting scheduled for Tuesday night, and I ask for your prayers in that, uh, for us in that meeting. We will be reviewing the financial uh, situation of the parish uh, as of now, year to date, compared to last year, and it it's down. We you know we, we've uh, we've taken a hit too. Um, uh, so, and this is in in light of our uh, efforts now to uh, look at, at installing live streaming equipment. Uh, live streaming equipment has been on the radar. Uh, it's been on my radar for a number of years. Uh, ever since we put the, the screens and the projectors in the church, uh, that was done with an eye that eventually we would have live streaming. And <clears throat> I think the time is right. You know, there were a number of reasons why we couldn't move earlier. Uh, the roof being the latest and the, and the biggest single reason. Uh, but I, the time is right now. And when so many of our parishioners don't feel safe or can't join us in person, uh, I just think that uh, we, we need to, uh, again, following the movement of the Spirit, uh, do what we can, not only to minister to our own flock, but to reach out to fish for those that are, are not currently uh, among our flock. Uh, there's fishing and there's, there's shepherding, and there's reaching out and there's ministering to the people we have. And in these days, it used to be live streaming was a way to reach out. You know, mostly, predominantly, it was a reach and outreach. Uh, these days, it's both. It is our tool for feeding our sheep, and it is our tool for our, our outreach, uh, for our missionary outreach uh, to fish uh, for the Lord. And so, um, anyway, we have a couple of quotes, and we will be discussing those, and I hope to be able to present uh, a plan going forward next week. And I hope that next week I will also be able to uh, announce something, uh, make an announcement that I think if we can, if we go forward with it, that will be a milestone, a real milestone in our uh, shift from maintenance to mission. Uh, this, uh, this has been on my heart for a year and a half. Uh, we talked about it at the town hall meeting in, at the end of January when when the roof was the big thing in, 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 the, uh, in everybody's mind and in our discussions. Uh, I mentioned the idea uh, then, and uh, so we, we've always we've kept that in mind throughout the year, and we'll talk about that on Tuesday night, and I, 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 it's, my re, it's my fervent hope that we can uh, make this big announcement, uh, and what a, what a change in, in, I think, that this will bring for our parish. Um, anyway, enough said. Um, keep safe. Uh, uh, you know, and keep safe. Uh, keep each other in prayers. Try to, to remain uh, calm and, and keep our trust in the Lord. Uh, and um, keep awake. Keep awake for the movements of the Spirit in your lives. And, uh, and I, I do, as I said at the end of the homily, I ask God's blessing on, on your efforts to do just that, uh, as I know you will. All right? God bless.